So first off, this is literally day four, okay? Unless day four was the other day, then this is day five. I'm losing track of the days, but I'm just, can you guys hear this? Like, it's like taco meat simmering inside of like, um, the seasonings. Can you guys hear that? It's like, I don't know, probably. <laughs> um, so yeah, so there's a few things that might have changed because, you know, what else was I supposed to because what else was I supposed to do while I was not doing a video besides edit my little chapter that I wrote because I got invested. Okay, so Wesley and Joey actually met each other when they were younger. And Joey took a liking to Wesley, so she kidnapped, <laughs> became friends with Wesley. Unfortunately, Wesley had to move because his dad got a business opportunity. And Wesley does not remember Joey, but Joey... She remembers, and that's because she barely has a few people that she takes a liking to, which is her Nana, and then Joey. And her parents are kind of, like, default, even though she's kind of sad about how she didn't really get enough attention from them when she was younger. But she she understands, though. She's an understanding child. Okay. Wesley first noticed Joey again in the school's library, a place he frequented to escape from the chaos of his school life and enjoy a quiet corner for his gaming strategies and collections. Joey was there often, her face hidden behind a stack of books and her fingers stained with ink. Wesley found Joey interesting. When Wesley would see Joey in the halls, he always thought she carried a cold, distant look that reminded him of the NPCs in his games present yet detached from the narrative around them but whenever she was in the library reading her books she had a shine and a sparkle in her eye even though wesley went to the library to strategize gaming taxes he started going so he could see joey and think of a way to start up a conversation with her joey in turn noticed wesley's occasional glances joey being joey immediately remembered him there wasn't a lot of people joey enjoyed being in her company there's only ever two people young wesley and her nanny who she calls nana and of course her parents by default but Joey, being Joey again, didn't say anything to him because he she assumed that he changed just like every other person she came into contact with. Joey knew Wesley went to, school, went to her school because <laughs> he was really well known, mostly because people wanted to know about his condition and he was a very gracious person. One day, Wesley gathered the courage to go and sit at Joey's table, thinking a conversation would happen naturally. For Wesley, this was really weird for him because he was never the one to seek out a person. It was always the other way around. Forgetting what his original mission was when he started thinking about the latest gaming strategy and accidentally knocks over his water. Joy looks over, her gaze sharp and ass assessing, as though calculating whether or not to acknowledge the mess. Wuzzy mumbles an apology, hurried to clean up the water with his sleeve. She nodded and returning to her task, assuming the interaction o was over, but something about her directness intrigued him. Most people tried too hard to be nice or were just completely fake because of his because of his greater demeanor and because of his popularity, but Joey's indifference felt honest. It's not like Joey didn't find Wesley equally interesting, but she just thought he wouldn't be the Wesley she remembered. Wesley... Slowly, Joey and Wesley started making casual conversations. He told her about his passion for gaming, and she shared with him about her passion for writing and baking. Over time, Joey found that Wesley hadn't changed much at all. His company was still surprisingly comfortable. He didn't pry, didn't ask if there was something wrong with her because she was so quiet. He was just there, focused on his tasks. Wesley, in turn, found Joey's presence calming. She didn't expect anything from him, didn't ask about his condition, although he was pretty sure with the way rumors spread, she already knew. Wesley, though there was something familiar, Wesley thought there was something familiar about Joey that he couldn't place. One day during their library hangouts, Joey asked Wesley why he wore contacts. Wesley was caught off guard by two things. One, how did she know he was wearing contacts? And two, why did she say it as if she always knew? Instead of asking the question she should have, Wesley simply told Joey people stare. Joey nodded as if that made perfect sense. Over the weeks, their relationship evolved, and they started to be more comfortable with each other, even hanging out outside of class. People started to notice this, and act like Wesley was taking pity on the weird girl. Wesley didn't know why, but this infuriated him, to the point where he started to lose friends. Not that he cared anyway, since they only hung out with him because of his popularity. Wesley and Joey sort of have the opposite personality. On the outside, Wesley is very sociable, when most of the time he likes to be left alone to play his game, and Joey on the outside is very reserved when she actually likes to be in people's companies that she enjoys.
Weeks passed, and Wesley found himself looking forward to their quiet moment together, where words were often secondary to the comfort of each other's presence. He began to notice the little things about Joey. The way she ab- absentmindedly tucked the loose strand of hair behind her ear, how she smiled subtly when reading something particularly interesting, and the faint smell of vanilla that always lingered around her. Joey, too, began to look forward to their hangout. Wesley's company was different from anyone else's. He wasn't loud or overbearing. He didn't try to fill the silence with meaningless chatter. She appreciated his steady, calm presence. He was someone she could sit with for hours without feeling the need to say much, and yet his few words always seemed to hold some type of weight. One day, they decided to meet at the bakery Joey volunteered at. It was secretly Joey's bakery, now that she told anyone. You know, she likes to keep a low profile, so now people don't know that she's rich because she doesn't want uh, people to see her, sort of see her for just for her money instead of see her for herself. So she doesn't really tell anyone. A quaint little shop tucked away from the bustling streets. When Wesley arrived, he was struck by how different Joey seemed in this environment. She moved with quiet confidence, her usually guarded expression softened as she worked with the dough. Wesley watched her with... <laughs> watched her... <laughs> noticing the way her hands skillfully shaped pastries and decorated cakes. Joey noticed his gaze and raised an eyebrow. What? she asked, though her tone held no irritation. Nothing, Leslie replied, smiling. Just, I didn't know you were this good. Joey's cheeks flushed slightly, a rare display of emotion. It's just something I enjoy. It's calming. Leslie nodded, understanding the feeling all too well. You're lucky to have found something like that, he said quietly. Joey paused, looking at him thoughtfully. You have too, you know, she replied. With your gaming, you're always so focused when you talk about it. Well, he hadn't expected her to notice that, but he appreciated it. Maybe, he admitted. But it's different with you. You have this spark when you bake. Like, you're in your element. He didn't respond immediately, but a small smile appeared on her lips as she handed him a rolling pin. Let's see if we can find your spark too, she said teasingly. They spent the rest of the evening baking together with Joey patiently guiding Wesley through each step. Despite his clumsiness, Wesley found himself enjoying the process more than he expected. There was something about being with Joey that made everything feel lighter easier. As they sat side by side, laughing at Wesley's misshapen cookies, something shifted between them. It was subtle, almost ear- <laughs> I keep- I always get this word, like, wrong, bro. Imperceptible. <laughs> but it was there, an unspoken understanding, a connection that went beyond words. When the evening came at the end, they walked to the- they walked out of the bakery together, the night air cool against their skin. At this point, they're leaving the bakery, because it's the evening. And the bakery has closed, and they've been there the whole time, but she just supposed to be volunteering, which means she wasn't supposed to be there the whole time. Yes, she was, and Wesley's not saying, would well, you actually work here? Or, like, is this your store? Or, like, he's not questioning. Like, Wesley, where's your head? Are you just so, so, um, enraptured by Joey that you just, you're, all your senses are just gone when it comes to her? Like, bro, use your, you think, first, you think you notice her from somewhere, then she knows about your contacts, and you're like, nobody knows I wear contacts, because who the heck is going to know you wear contacts unless you're wearing some Naruto contacts or something like that, like some uh, out-of-this-world contacts that people are like, no, it's contacts. Like, I know it's the future and, and whatever, and y'all's wearing some more te- technical, te- te- uh, technology, tech- <laughs> oh my gosh, technically, ad- I had a, what? it's more advanced technology, tech- oh my gosh, and you're not suspecting anything, you know? Whatever, whatever, Wesley, you know, whatever, okay, anyway, Wesley hesitated for a morning, for a moment before turning to Joey, thanks for today, he said, his voice a little softer than usual, Joey met his gaze, her eyes reflecting the dim streetlights, it was fun, she replied, her usual so expression softened by a hint of a smile, Wesley wanted to say more, to express the growing feelings he didn't fully understand yet, but he wasn't sure how, instead he simply said, we should do this more often. Joey nodded, a sign of agreement that carried more weights than words could. As they parted ways, both of them felt a warmth that lingered out long after they said goodnight. A warmth that hinted at something deeper, something that was slowly but surely blossoming between them. The next few weeks, Wesley and Joey were spending more time together, both in and out of the library. Their baking sessions at the quaint bakery became a regular thing, a routine they looked forward to. Wesley was still horrible at baking, but with Joey's patient guidance and quiet encouragement, he improved slightly, even if only slightly. But it wasn't the baking that kept him coming back, he realized. It was Joey. Well, no freaking du- I like commenting on my stuff, even though I know I'm the one that wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no freaking duh. Joey found herself opening up to Wesley in ways she hadn't with anyone else. Oh, okay. 
she said oh, wait joey why haven't you told wesley that you know that you guys met when you were younger like what are you waiting for like for something to monumentously blow up and they'll be like wesley you don't remember like bro anyway she shared stories of her childhood never mentioning wesley for whatever reason of course how she learned to bake from her nana and why she preferred the solitude of the library wesley listened never judging always offering a kind word or a shared laugh it was a slow process but bit by bit the walls joey had built around her began to crumble one evening as they were cleaning up after another baking session joey asked why don't you bring your siblings next time we meet up wesley paused not expecting the question he hadn't thought about it before you want to be around people? Wesley realized how he said it and was about to apologize, but Joey suddenly said, yeah, why not? Wesley was unsure, not because he was never someone to be around his siblings, but because his house wasn't exactly friendly, to put it. Joey watched him quietly and noticed he looked conflicted. You guys can come to my house, she said after a moment. Not the house she stayed in with her parents, but the house she bought with her bakery. Wesley noticed what Joey did, and something in him shifted. Yeah. I like that, Wesley said, his eyes softening. Joey's gaze is steady and wavering. As she looked at Wesley, he hadn't worn his contacts today, but wore his special glasses. You could still, you couldn't see his eyes, but in that moment, he took off his glasses. The all-white irises reflected the soft light, creating an almost ethereal effect. Joey found herself captivated. captivated. She knew his eyes were unique, but this was her first time seeing them in a while. Your eyes, she said softly, her voice barely above a whisper. They're beautiful. Wesley felt his breath catch in his throat, caught off guard by the intensity of Joey's gaze and the sincerity in her words. A warm spread. <laughs> I mixed my words up. A warmth spread through his chest as he searched her face, looking for any sign of insecurity, but finding only genuine admiration. You, you really think so? He asked. His voice equally soft, tender with a mix of surprise and hope. Joey nodded. The extraordinary, like you. She turned back to wiping the counters as the compliment hadn't turned Wesley's world upside down. Wesley well, wasn't sure what to say. He wasn't used to compliments, especially not ones that felt so genuine as Joey's. Thanks, he finally managed, his voice almost a whisper. Joey just nodded, her voice back on the task at hand, but the atmosphere between them had shifted again, growing warmer, more intimate. As they left the bakery that evening, the usual quiet between them was different. While they walked, Joey turned her bus stop, their shoulders brushing occasionally, neither of them feeling the need to pull away. When they reached the stop, Joey turned to Wesley, her expression soft. I'm glad we met. Yet, she didn't add, again. She said, her voice almost shy. Wesley felt the warm spread through his chest. Me too, he replied, his voice sincere. They stood for a moment, the world around them fading into the background. Wesley wanted to reach out, to take her hand and tell her, but he hesitated, unsure if it was too soon. But Joey, ever the one to take quiet initiative, stepped closer, closing the small gap between them. She reached up, <laughs> she reached up lightly brushing a strand of his hair away from his face. Tell me on your time. I wouldn't pressure you to share, she said softly, her fingers lingering just for a moment before she pulled back. Was he swallowed? I know, he replied. The bus arrived, break in the moment, and Joy gave him a small smile before boarding. Was he watched as she found a seat by the window, their eyes meeting one last time before the bus pulled away. As he stood there, the streetlights casting long shadows, Wesley realized something. Joy wasn't just a friend anymore. Well, no, duh, Sherlock! <laughs> she was something more. Someone who saw him, truly saw him, and accepted him for who he was. And as much as he tried to keep his feelings at bay, he knew, deep down, that he was falling for her. Really? Really? Hmm. I didn't see it coming. <laughs> <clears throat> and by the look in her eyes tonight, he dared to hope that maybe, just maybe, she was falling for him too. And not just being Joey. Well, no, she reached up to you. She doesn't like really being around people, but she's comfortable in your presence. And she, it's literally the scene straight out of a freaking <laughs> movie. She puts a strand of hair behind your head, looks you in your eyes, where her gaze soft and said, Don't force yourself. You can tell me whenever you're ready. You know that, right? And like, literally. Bro, 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 I guess this dense when it comes to, like, relationships, like, noticing if a girl's flirting with them or not. Anyway, I don't know. Anyway, oh, well, actually, I kind of do know, but <laughs> I don't like that. Anyway, uh, the days that full were filled with a new kind of tension, one that neither Wesley nor Joey had experienced before. It wasn't uncomfortable, but rather, it was charged with anticipation, a feeling that something was shifting between them, something that just couldn't be ignored. The day arrived when Wesley and his siblings were coming over, and for some reason, Joey was nervous. She had spent the morning tidying up her house, making sure everything was perfect, even though it always was. As she arranged a plate of freshly baked cookies and on the coffee table, Joey caught herself wondering what Wesley's sibling would think of her. 
It was strange, she thought, to care so much about the opinions of people she have she haven't even met yet. The doorbell rang, startling Joey out of her thoughts. She took a deep breath, smoothed down her shirt, and went to answer it. As she opened the door, she was greeted by Wesley's warm smile and the curious faces of his siblings peering around him. Welcome, Joey said, her voice slightly nervous but warm. Wesley stepped inside, followed by the twins. She noticed how they all shared the same nose, and the twins had a white streak in their hair. I'm Joey, she introduced herself, gesturing towards the living room. I made some cookies, if you like. Isn't it supposed to be a kitchen? I guess when they were on the kitchen. Anyway, um, I'm Varden, the older twin, he said proudly. Yeah, by three minutes, the girl pouted. I'm Annie, the smarter and prettier twin, she said. To her surprise, Joy found herself smiling at the twins. Kitty, they said at the same time. <laughs> I don't know if I said that right. It's Kitty because they're like, they're mixed children. So I don't know if I did that pronunciation right, but anyway. Um... How did our brother, Varden, start it? Get you as a girlfriend, and he finished. Oh, we're not, Joey started, but the twins were already off to find the freshly baked goods. Wesley felt a blush cre- Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Wesley felt a blush creeping up his neck as he watched his siblings dash off. He turned to Joey and apologetic smile on his face. Sorry about that, he said softly, his eyes being hers. They can be a handful sometimes. Joey shook her head, a small smile playing on her lips. It's fine, she replied, her voice warm. They seem lively, she paused for a moment, then added, Come on, let's make sure they don't eat all the cookies. They all hang out for a while when Joey makes lunch for them all, even though Wesley insisted that she did it. Oni-chan, Annie whined. Hmm, Wesley replied. She's pretty, cooks, and Annie started. Bakes, the Varden finished. Are you interested, Varden said, in younger siblings, Annie finished. Wesley choked on his drink, coughing as he tried to regain his composure. Guys, that's not... He started, but Joey cut him off with a soft laugh. I'm flattered, she said, her eyes twinkling with amusement as she looked at the twins. But I think your brother would be sad without you guys, she glanced at Wesley. He could always visit, or... And he said, we could get married, Barton finished. Joey nearly spat out her drink. That's not what I was going to say, Barton! And he shouted. Wesley's face turned a deep shade of red as he tried to salvage the situation. Guys, please, he said, his voice a mix of embarrassment and exasperation. Joey is our friend, not a potential wife. So you're saying I'm not wife material, Wes? That's not what I... He stammered. Then she laughed. A real, genuine laugh. And Wesley's heart was caught in his throat. The twins joined in on the laughter. The tw- <laughs> All of them having a good time. After lunch, the twins went to take their daily nap. And Joey and Wesley... <laughs> and, jo- <laughs> and Joey told Wesley she had a system in the living room. It was just under the cabinets. Joey went to the Joey went to the stories today and bought all the recommended gaming gear yesterday. It was one of the most spontaneous decisions she's made for someone besides Nana. Joey grabbed a book from her library of books and sat on the couch and Wesley chose to sit on the floor. He was playing a vintage game called DQ Builders. Hank hey guys, if you know, you know. As Wesley immersed himself in the game, Joey found her eyes wandering to her Oh my gosh. I'm not gonna finish it. Wondering to, from her book to his, to his focus form, she noticed the way his brows furrowed in concentration, the slight smile that played on his lips when he achieved something in the game. The comfortable silence between them was punctuated only by the soft sounds of the game and an occasional rustle of pages. After a while, Joey set her book aside. Mind if I watch? She asked softly. Wesley glanced at her, a warm smile spreading across his face. Not at all, he replied, sitting on the couch, because he was feeling stiff sitting on the floor for so long. As they sat side by side, their shoulders barely touching, Joey felt a warmth spreading through her, through her chest. She found herself less interested in the game and more captivated by Wesley's reactions. The way his eyes lit up, the soft chuckle he let out at amusing moments. Wesley, too, was acutely aware of Joey's presence beside him, the faint smell of vanilla that always seemed to surround her, the warmth threading from her body so close to his. He found it increasingly difficult to concentrate on the game. <clears throat> In a moment of digital peril, Wesley's character nearly fell off a cliff. Without thinking, Joy reached out her hand, landing on top of his on the controller. Watch out! She <laughs> exclaimed softly. Time seemed to stand still as they, as they both froze, acutely aware of the contact. Slowly, Wesley turned to look at Jolie. Jolie. Joey. Their faces now mere inches apart. The air between them cracked old with unspoken tension. Joey's eyes flickered to Wesley's lips and back to his eyes. She could feel her heart racing, her breath catching in her throat. Wesley, too, felt as if the world had narrowed down to just this moment, just the two of them. Sorry, Joey said. 
and return her focus back to the game as if nothing just happened. Wolsey felt the pang of disappointment as Joey pulled away, <laughs> but his, he respected her boundaries. He turned his attention back to the game, trying to ignore the lingering one before her hand had touched his. After a while, Joey went back to reading her reading her book. Joey was <laughs> was new to this feeling she had in her chest, but whenever she found something she liked, she would eventually make that thing hers. Not in a rich, spoiled brat way, in a regular way that if you and I liked something, we would get it a happy puppy, like, we would get it like a puppy, and in, in the moment Joey shared with Leslie, she knew what she wanted, and she was very straightforward. Then, with the same straightforwardness that characterized her, Joey broke the silence. Want to be my boyfriend? She asked, her voice calm despite the storm of emotions inside her. Yeah, he replied simply, a smile spreading across his face. And just like that, with no grand dressers or dramatic declarations, they crossed the line from friends to something more. Joey leaned her No, I don't really like this part, though, because, like, Joey wouldn't do something like this. Hey.